Hello everyone, in today's episode of Project Civic SI, I'll be testing out the Energy Suspension Master Bushing Kit. Energy Suspension makes these complete kits that include polyurethane replacements for all the major serviceable suspension bushings on your car. Specifically, these kits seem super popular in the Honda world with Energy offering these master bushing kits for just about every major Honda chassis. For the 8th generation Civic, the Energy Master Bushing Kit includes new bushings for the front control arms, sway bars, steering rack, rear trailing arm assembly, and the rear knuckle, so it's very comprehensive. After 110,000 hard miles, I knew for certain that several bushings on my car, like the front control arm bushings, were in need of replacement. However, not every replaceable bushing on the car is easily inspected, so who knows what condition those other ones are in. So I grabbed this energy suspension kit with the goal of finding out whether or not these master bushing kits are any good, and whether or not the master kit is worth buying overall versus piecing together aftermarket options a la carte that are available for these cars. So let's jump into the install process and find out. While this is very much DIYable, there are some special tools required to do this job. You're going to need a torque wrench good for at least 200 pound feet of twist, a 36 millimeter axle nut socket, and then a bushing slash ball joint press kit with different sizes to match the various bushings on this car. I sourced all three of these tools from my local AutoZone, uh, they're all available rentals. Uh, however, there is one more thing you're going to need, it's a tricky one. This DIY involves pressing out bushings, so you're going to need access to a press or have someone willing to press out your old bushings. or you have to be able to get very creative and do it without a press. With that said, I started with the front control arms. Now obviously, to jack the carb, put it on jack stands, and then need to unpinch that 36 millimeter axle nut with a screwdriver and hammer or a punch. After that, get your biggest breaker bar with a pipe extension and break that axle nut loose. This allows the axle to move around freely and kind of just makes the job a little bit easier. From there, grab your 14 millimeter wrench and remove the sway bar end link from the control arm. If your end links are seized on, you can jam a 5mm Allen key in there to keep it from spinning. Now for me personally, I found it easiest just to remove the front sway bar altogether. All you need is your 14mm socket to do this. Next up, you're going to have to remove your ball joint fasteners to separate the knuckle assembly from the control arm. There are three 17mm nuts here. Now my camera battery died here, so I filmed myself doing the next steps the next day on the other side of the car. The control arm is bolted to the chassis with two bolts. There's a 14 millimeter beneath the axle that points towards the back of the car and a 17 millimeter that points up right there in the foreground. Remove them both and then wiggle the control arm out of the car. The first time you do this, it's gonna take quite a bit of wrangling to get it out of there. Next is the fun job of pressing out the old bushings. You're gonna have to rummage through that ball joint press kit and find the right fitting that matches the diameter of the control arm bushings. Then you're going to have to find a proper way to support the control arm as you're pressing out the bushings, as it can be really awkward to kind of hold, this is kind of a weird shape. What I ended up doing was using one of the larger axle nut sockets as a mount for the control arm. As you're pressing out the old bushings, you're going to want to go slowly and check your work periodically. I accidentally had my first control arm I did this to slip, and then the force of the press actually bent it, leading to this fun junkyard excursion. So I'm at the Wilmington LKQ junkyard and I found this red SI coupe and unfortunately there is no front suspension. The whole subframe assembly is gone, the whole powertrain is gone. You can see they cut the exhaust off back there. And you know, I've been looking for an SI to get that control arm. I was a little bit bummed. So I was walking past the car. You know, they got the whole interior, nothing's left. And sure enough, that whole front subframe assembly was hiding back here. So I'm going to try and get these control arms so they're in okay shape and then uh, take it from there. Eventually the bushing will lose its grip on the control arm and slide out freely. So that's the front position bushing out, now it's time to tackle the rear position on the control arm bushing. Now the factory bushing sort of mushrooms over the edges of the control arm which can make pressing it out kind of tricky because it makes it kind of slippery. I find it best to take a razor blade and kind of cut off the excess rubber material to help press it out. Again, I used one of the larger axle nut sockets in that kit I rented from the parts store and then mounted the control arm underneath the press. Uh, for this one, I ended up using a large impact socket to press up the bushings since none of the press tools in the AutoZone ball joint kit were quite the right size. 
Now at this point, the control arm has had both of the OEM bushings removed and it's time to install the new one. The rear position bushing is in two pieces, they just slide in. However, the front position bushing does need to be pressed in. I initially had one hell of a time trying to do this and got so frustrated I had to call it quits for that night. I eventually, I realized the trick to pressing in the large, single piece bushing is to put a large weight over the bushing and then use the press. That large weight evenly applies pressure on the bushing, preventing it from slipping or going into the hole crooked. As previously mentioned, that rear position replacement bushing is a two-piece design. Slide one piece in, then insert the metal collar, and then using a mallet, tap in the other piece. Now it's time to reinstall the front control arm. Reassembly is the opposite of removal, well, at least until I ran into fitment issues with the energy suspension bushings. So I have everything put together and I run into an issue trying to reinstall the control arm with the new bushings. And I figured this might be an issue because I've had this problem before in different cars. But um, with these bushings, energy suspension supplies this central collar. This is a metal collar with the purpose of basically helping locate the bolt when you bolt this back into the chassis. Now the problem with these, when you have a separate center collar and the actual rubber bushing, is that these collars are not always quite the right size. And the problem is, especially when this is a very tight precision fit, if this collar sticks up even a millimeter, kind of like that, it no longer fits in the chassis. You can actually see where it's been contacting the chassis and I can't get the bushing any further in the chassis than this point. So I started to grind it down using a grinder and it went from not fitting at all to getting to about here. So I need to keep grinding this down until it's completely flush. Now I actually went to the other side of the car, took everything apart and did the same fix. Let's ground this down about two millimeters and it slid right in with a couple whacks of the hammer as it should. This piece, the energy suspension supplies, is just a little bit too big. And after a few minutes grinding away at the base of that metal collar, all it took was a few whacks with the uh, hammer and that thing went right in. It's still a really tight precision fit, but we, I clearanced off just enough to make it actually fit in there. Uh, the rear bushing seems to work just fine. I think a big thing about installing these bushings that you need to know, and it's 100% necessary, is that the only way to actually reinstall the control arm in the chassis is to move everything out of the way, like you did a removal, get the control arm in the chassis and bolt it into the chassis before you do anything else. Now the problem is, once you do this, those new bushings are so stiff, they're not gonna line up the control arm to the ball joint bolts right there because you just cannot manhandle, you can't fight how stiff these bushings are. So, the thing is, when this car, when this is all assembled and you have, you're trying to move the control arm but it's bolted to the chassis and you're trying to fight against the strut to try and line up those ball, ball joint bolts to the control arms, the only way it's gonna work is to remove the strut. As you see, there's no front strut in this car, and that takes away all the resistance here. Now granted, you need to be really careful because now nothing's holding the knuckle other than this jack, and so this could fall and damage your brake line, but it's the only way I've found after all day to make this all work is to bolt the control arm into the chassis, remove the strut, and that gives you enough free play in the whole knuckle to line up the ball joint and the control arm, and then it's just a matter of reinstalling the strut. Uh, obviously when you do control arms, uh, a new alignment is required, so taking out the strut anyway, no harm, no foul. Uh, it's more disassembly, but it's the only way that seems to work, and that's all day now. So, I wrapped up the front control arm bushing install, and I figured before, before I end things for the night, I'm going to install the Energy Polyurethane Sway Bar Bushings, which I can see right here. So this is pretty straightforward. And the nice thing about Sway Bar Bushings is they're very easy to test how effective they are. Now this is the sway bar right here, and normally you think you want the sway bar to be really stiff and rigid because it controls roll, but that's not entirely true. You actually want the sway bar to move because it does move as the suspension goes up and down. And the thing is, if you have the bar be super stiff like this and not move, you're actually creating binding and stiction in the, in the suspension. 
You actually want the sway bar to kind of have some play and some move like this. And ideally, you drop the sway bar, you pull the sway bar up as if it's going through the suspension stroke, and ideally, when you let go by hand, the bar should fall. And ideally, it would fall very slowly, kind of like this, to show a complete lack of stiction. Now, there does appear to be a little bit of friction in this. You can see it drops down just a little bit, but not very much. It's pretty pliable by hand. That's kind of about it. And that's actually pretty common with sway bar bushings. And so I'm not really gonna fault energy for that because they all seem to do this to an extent. Basically what the problem is, is that when you crank down the mounting bolts right here, the bushing is so large that it causes the bar to stick up and get stuck there. So ideally I'm gonna put a little shim or a washer on the other side of this mounting bracket. That gives the bar a little bit more breathing room and ability to kind of move up and down nice and freely and create less friction in the front suspension. As far as fitment, yeah, they fit just fine. Okay, uh, uh, as you can see, I'm at the rear of the car now and everything's already taken apart. So I've obviously skipped a few steps. So going into this, my strategy has been to do one side of the car first and film the second side. That way by then I kind of have a good feel for what I should be doing and how to do it. It makes the whole process go by quicker. Um, but this is an important step. So I'm actually on the driver rear suspension now and everything came apart rather nicely, which is a surprise, that'd be much harder. Um, but again, I wanna go back to the, is the energy suspension kit worth it? Cause this is a big part of it. So um, this car is 110,000 miles, a lot of track miles, a lot of autocross miles and daily driving in LA, bad roads, all that. And I pulled everything apart. Uh, here is the trailing arm assembly and then the knuckle is back there. And um, every bushing on this car is in good shape up back here. Let me put a light on here, it's rather dark. So this is the rear position on the trailing arm. It bolts into the chassis back here and the spring sits right here. Normally, it sits kind of like this. Uh, so this, this arm obviously goes up and down as the spring and shock move. And uh, these bushings, unlike that front compliance bushing that has big voids in it and gaps, that's why it fatigues, <clears throat> all the bushings back here are actually solid. So this bushing is solid rubber with a metal shell on the inside and it looks totally fine as a result. Uh, the rear trailing arm bushing, this guy right here, um, is actually in good shape too. Now this bushing, due to the way it bolts in the chassis and the way the rear trailing arm works, it's a multi-axis bushing, so it should move a little bit left, right, and up and down. And as you can see, you can get a little bit of movement there, but it's not broken, per se. It seems fine. Let me grab the knuckle, because it's kind of the same case. Now, granted, I shouldn't be entirely surprised just because this is a front-wheel drive car and it's very front-heavy, so that front suspension is doing the most work versus the rear. But let me grab the knuckle and show you that, too. All right, so this is the rear knuckle assembly on the Civic Si. Uh, hub is right here, brake dust shield, and then back here is the knuckle itself. And for the time being, I should put the bolts in here so I wouldn't lose them. But again, so the knuckle has two bushings down here, one and two, and they're the same deal. They are a solid bushing, uh, complete rubber with a metal shell on the inside. As a result of being solid with that big metal shell, they don't get much side to side movements. They don't actually wear out that much. And they look perfect. Um, I'm sure the light can capture that, but like they're perfectly fine. And um, as I'm a bit pressed for time, and I'd really rather not break more things as I go along trying to do this, I'm trying to kind of put it back together and call it good. So when I went to tackle this initially, the big question was, is the energy suspension kit worth it? And I think the question now shifts because this car, even with 110,000 miles and being nine years old, it just doesn't need most of the bushings that energy is supplying. 
We'll revisit that in a second, but for now, I'm actually gonna put this back together. And so if you are in this position and you are taking this car apart, basically watch this step by step and watch it backwards and it'll all make sense to you. That way, it's a pretty helpful DIY because as I was looking online, I couldn't find a complete guide as to how to take the whole rear suspension apart. So I had to kind of go piece by piece by piece and figure out how it goes. So kind of watch this, take the steps and apply it to your own car as you go to disassemble or reassemble it. So let's get to it. With the rear suspension, disassembly is a bit simpler just because everything rests on the rear trailing arm. You're gonna wanna unhook the e-brake cables and then remove the rear brake assembly. You do not need to disconnect any of the brake lines, just set the caliper aside underneath the car, but don't let it hang, kinda leave some slack in the brake lines so you don't damage it. With the brakes removed, you can unhook the shock from the trailing arm and then you can unbolt the knuckle assembly from the trailing arm and set it aside. Afterwards, you're gonna to want to put a jack under the trailing arm and lightly lift it up. That sort of relieves pressure on the mounting bolts, and then from there, you can unbolt the trailing arm by the bolts that go through the bushings in the chassis. After the trailing arm is unbolted, you can slowly lower it down and make sure to catch the coil spring before it falls out. Everything came apart and was reinstalled without issue on my car, though reassembly can be a bit annoying at first, at least until the trailing arm is bolted back up into the chassis. Okay, so what I've done is put a jack under the base of the trailing arm, jack the trailing arm up, and then slide the trailing arm into the two chassis points uh, for the rear part of the trailing arm. The best way to get it back in the hole is just slide it up from the bottom on up. You can see where it kind of has a clamp uh, type system where it kind of is wider at the base and narrower as you go up. So you push in from the bottom to get, get that bolt started. Uh, then you want to put your coil spring back in place, make sure to line it up with the bottom spring retainer. Then it's just a matter of jacking up the trailing arm until you can line up the bolt holes for the rear trailing arm bushing up here. And now I'm gonna grab the knuckle and put it back in here. Easy as that. All right, let's grab our knuckle bolts. Now I have a piece of paper over here that has each bolt labeled in a little imaginary box. That way I don't get anything mixed up because there's a lot of little bolts that go back here and they're all slightly different. You want to make sure you kind of keep them in the right order. Like for example, the knuckle has two big bolts, but they are completely different. So you want to make sure you put the right ones in the right spot. Now this rear bolt here adjusts the, the angle of the knuckle relative to the front of the car. This is your main toe adjustment. So this bolt is actually cammed. Um, there, I put markers on it, but obviously once you take everything apart, you're gonna have to do an alignment afterwards anyway. Just try and get it as close as you can, but because it is cammed, it has a little detents, the bolt only goes in one way. There you go, like that. All right, I had to cut away to find this. Uh, that toe adjustment bolt is a bit interesting where it has um, two nuts that go on either end. This is the cam adjuster on the opposing side that goes here. And again, it has a little detent that sits in. And then this nut is just to lock it on. Like that. Okay, so the whole knuckle, or whole knuckle, actually rear trailing arm assembly is back together. Um, because these are all rubber bushings and they're all, and the suspension goes up and down, we actually need to torque these bolts down at ride height. Now obviously I have the car on jack stands, so I can't get the car at ride height while getting, simultaneously getting under it and tightening all these bolts. So what we're gonna do is uh, eight tenths close enough. Again, we'll put the jack back under the knuckle and we're gonna kind of eyeball it. We're gonna see, eh, that looks like we're about normal ride heights at, and then go down and crank these bolts down. Again, most of the time, works all the time. Hello everyone, as you can see, I am back in the Civic. I'm driving it around. Uh, it's been a few days since I finished the install of the energy suspension bushings. 
I want to clarify that the only ones that actually ended up installing are the front control arm bushings as well as the polyurethane sway bar bushings. As you saw in the video after taking apart the rear suspension, all the bushings back there are actually solid rubber with metal joints in between them, so they really don't fatigue as much as those front control arm bushings with their big voided soft rubber component. So for the time being, I did not replace those. But I do want to give you a quick update review on the front control arm bushings. Basically they are a solid polyurethane bushing with a big metal sleeve in the middle. And that basically means that compared to that stock, soft, voided rubber bushing, there's less deflection front to back and side to side. And what that means is the steering is much more direct. There's no initial turn in pause and then the car kind of goes the car kind of just feels more direct and more connected to the steering what the front wheels are doing what the steering is doing now kind of feels more in line as it should now some people online have mentioned that they're worried about the noise vibration harshness of polyurethane bushings and um that is true in certain applications but it's been my experience on multiple platforms that with front, front control arm bushings in particular, there's not really much trade-off in terms of NVA, so the noise, vibration, and the harshness. Uh, the car kind of feels the same in that regard. Uh, if you put a passenger in this car, they'd be, they wouldn't be able to tell anything any different before or after. However, from the driver's perspective, especially over broken pavement you do feel sort of the textures and the grittiness of the pavement through the car a little bit more you know you kind of feel it if you put you know your hands the steering wheel very gently you can feel it through the steering a little bit more you kind of feel it through the floor and the brake pedal and the accelerator a little bit more it's not bad it's just you kind of feel a bit more connected to the road i personally really enjoy that i think it's a much more connected involving the experience but like I said, it's not a massive, massive difference. It's not like you're gonna think, oh no, I've suddenly turned this into a race car, I can't drive out on the street. That's not the case at all. Absolutely livable for a daily driver. And there's no real immediate downsides that I can see um, from those front control arm bushings. However, uh, as a result of this install, when I started the car back up, I have was greeted with a uh, dashboard that looks like a Christmas tree. So right now my VSA, traction control, TPMS, and ABS lights are all on. After a quick bit of Googling, this is not super uncommon when you take these cars apart apparently. It sounds like I must have dinged an ABS or a wheel speed sensor. So I need to figure out which one I must have broken or messed up and see about replacing it. So right now I do not have any ABS or anything, which is kind of annoying. Um, that's something you should probably keep in mind that could happen to you while you're doing this. So while I think the front control arm bushing upgrade is definitely worth it, we need to go back to the main question I had going into this is, are these energy suspension kits as a whole, are, they, are these complete kits worth it? And I think ultimately it depends. For me, it was not just because the only bushings that really needed to be replaced in my car, even with 110,599 miles in the odometer, were the front control arm bushings. Everything else seemed fine. And this is a car that's been in the track several times. It's almost, it was competitively autocross for several years, as well as the daily drive over the rough LA roads. So you have to think that for a daily driver, you're probably not gonna need to replace any of those rear bushings anytime soon. So is the energy suspension kit worth it? I think it's a nice kit. I just don't think it's worth it for most people. I think you're better off buying individual kind of kits and bushings as your car needs them. That kind of gives you the opportunity to kind of look elsewhere and not be stuck to one brand and one brand design philosophy. For example, after I bought the energy kit, I found out that uh, Moog of all people offers a uh, spherical bushing front control arm kit that's very, very cheap. Uh, I wish I went that route instead just because a spherical, a spherical bearing type setup so I was going to look better in a control arm than a polyurethane bushing. But you win some, you lose some. <clears throat> so that is the polyurethane energy suspension bushing master kit video. Hopefully this is helpful for you and your Honda.
work as any other vehicle because the device kind of pertains to most vehicles. And stay tuned for the next episode of Project Civic SI where I get this thing back out on the racetrack. That's coming very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.